So the boolean algebra can formulate a problem by binary variables. So based on the operation, manipulating these binary variables, you can compute something or calculate something. Um, so the binary variable means the value can be true or false. One of zero in our digital system. And the Boolean expressions are create, created by performing uh, operations on these Boolean variables. Uh, the Boolean operation includes not operation and all. So these two uh, examples of and and all. We can use a table to summarize the operation. This table includes two columns. Each column indicates a uh, variable because this operation uh, operating on X and Y, so we have a two columns. And we also have a four row, which is a two to n rows, because we have a, a two variable, n is a true. So uh, we have a four rows, which is four rows here. We just list all the possible combination of x and y. x and y can be zero and one. So there are two, uh, there are four cases. And, uh, in the last column, we write the value, uh, the result of the expression. So this table is a so-called table. The truth table can um, use can be used to uh, a very simple function like the two variable and the gate. It can also be used to in um, to represent a uh, very complex function, which includes many uh, binary variables. We just add more rows here, add more columns. So even nowadays, even a neural network can be uh, represented by we will talk about in the following lectures. So for some operations, we only have one more not um, operation. So only one x, and if the x is a zero, then you have one. Otherwise, if x is a one, then you have two. So one Boolean operation or Boolean function at least I have one single variable and I have one single, um, at the least I have one operators and at the least I have a, a one input and the input can be zero or one. In this way, it can produce a uh, output, which is also a number of the set of uh, Zero and one. Um, so in this way, uh, it's very convenient to use electrical signal on and off to represent one and two. So that's the reason why we choose the Boolean algebra uh, to implement by the digital system. So here is a one uh, relatively complex. Boolean function or Boolean expression. So in this function, we have a very variable x. Um, if we want to use a truth table to represent this function, then we need a 
three columns. Um, in order to better understand it, in order to better understand it, So when you get a very complex function, you can decouple this function into different intermediate variables. So in this way, you can gradually compute the, the whole truth table. So when we have uh, this function, so now phi has the highest priority. So this is not a max, and this is not a max, and this is the world. So not has the highest priority. And then we have n and all. So we use digital logical gates. I will cover that in the next lecture to implement these Boolean functions. So when we try to use electrical devices to implement these Boolean functions, we care about overhead. We want to use less uh, logic gates, physical gates to implement the same function. Less gates indicate a lower power consumption, smaller uh, chip area. Smaller chip area indicates uh, chip price, less dollar. So we have a motivation to so-called simplify the, the Boolean function. In order to achieve the same results of same function, if we can simplify the entire function, then we can achieve a lot of benefits like the less power consumption, uh, lower cost, lower prices. Then we have, we have a, a lot of uh, so-called identity and the loss to help us to achieve that. So for example, we have computed himself. So what's the you know easiest way to prove these ones? So the answer is a draw truth table because the law itself is also for example uh, by this uh, for this expression you have to run for a matrix x x and it also sets some social media variables, which is the x bar. Minus. 
you have an x bar here. And this is the result of x bar. And then you can have the final result. This is a final zero and one, which is the one zero which you can see no matter how the value is changed here, the final result is always there. So by a true stable, you can demonstrate all the laws here. And these three laws uh, can work on three variables. The purest one only work on one variable. These three can work on two and three variables, multiple variables. Again, in order to demonstrate of all truth of one, one expression like this. In this way, you can uh, demo, uh, you can prove that uh, this is a valuable. So the most important law, you know, in all the laws, among all the laws, the most important law is the Why this is the most important? Because we have a gate, so is a, which is a so-called axon. And then so in the real uh, in the real world, when you try to fabricate something, it's really difficult for the um it's more expensive for the uh, for the company to provide an end gate, all gate. Instead, they just give you one type of gate, which is a uh, maybe NAND gate or XOR gate. So by this one single gate, you can build all the gates here. I will show you how to do that in the following slide. Um, and in order to use the one single type of gate, these are also called universal gates. Uh, in order to use one universal gate to build all the and all not gates, uh, we need a deep by drawing a true stable. I will also explain that in the following slide. Assume that you, you have a task. Uh, the task is to implement um, this case uh, or this one. The first step is, of course, to do the simplification. So you can see that. This format of that uh, function. So in order to implement this, That's the reason why we need to do simplification. Uh, we can reduce power, we can reduce the area.
So sometimes um, it's easier to implement the context uh, of a function, the not function. The other, uh, I'm sorry, is that a uh, So in this in this case, then the Morgan law also help you a lot. So you can see you can see that. So by applying, simply applying a Morgan law, you can reduce one. So the Morgan law can also apply um the apply a So you can just uh, replace each variable by its complement and change them. Change all ends to off and all off to ends. So this this um, this multi variables uh, this more than two variables case is exactly the same. Uh, So like this. And then for this one, the other is the other one, which is this one. So if you uh, try to simplify those equations, those functions yourself, you can see that there are multiple ways to, simple, to simplify the same um, function. You can apply different laws to, to do the simplification. But the result will be, the, uh, will be equivalent. So in order to, you know, in order to um, enforce the same method to simplify uh, the Boolean algebra, the Boolean function, uh, we have a standard uh, form or method, which is the so-called canonical form. 
We will explain the canonical form in the following slide. So there are two types of canonical form because you, you can think the canonical form like this. Uh, of course, if I give you one single uh, Boolean function, and you can use different methods to simplify that. But uh, eventually, we want the computer to do that. Uh, the computer cannot choose, cannot simply choose which method is better for one um, particular Boolean algebra. Can achieve a last case or simplify the um, Boolean algebra more. So you have to give the computer software a standard method. This is so-called a canonical form. The canonical form has two types. One is the sum of the products. The other one is the product of the sum. So this one is the one is And uh, so the simplification in itself can be done by the some EDA software, and the EDA software exactly to be. The advantage of a so-called canonical form is that you can, it's very easy to convert a function to the sum of the product using the truth table. So the truth table, and you can convert the truth table directly to the canonical form, or convert to the canonical form back to the truth table. Then I will give you an example. So this is true. Okay. And you can you can see that the definition. Then you can write the sum of the product like this. So how to convert this to table to that so-called sum of the product canonical form? You just pick up uh, all the rows. So if the software has this truth table, it can directly write the sum of the product. The next step is to use a gate to implement these functions. And uh, when we talk about gates, we have a 
here it, 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 it's just a logic concept. You have a different way to infinite gates. For example, you can use transistor to infinite gates. We will also talk about that in the next lecture. And the gates is you have an end of all and the not gate. And each gate it has multiple inputs, two inputs or one input. And it also has a output. So here is a rather Or uh, other memories you use. This is an actual bit. And let me have. And then based on the Demoter law, you have a two method to implement each gate. So the first part, the first gate, first part is the right part. They are equivalent. So we call uh, XOR and NOR gate. We call the NAND gate and uh, NOR gate are so-called universal gates. Uh, sometimes you can use them. Uh, So you can see this is the truth table of uh, If you set an X to all the input here, you only have this node. So in this path, you only have this node. You, you cannot have B two. Why? Because these two input are the same. Both are both of them are x. They can be zero at the same time, which is the first root. Or they can be one at the same time. This is the last root. So only these two rows. So based on these two rows, because when the input is zero, the output is one. When the input is one, the output is zero. So 
the second again. How can it hear anything? The first part is also a manual. And the last one is the algorithm. So you can see that. So the, the larger gates can also have a more than two inputs and more than one output, but these gates can be easily decoupled. The larger gates can be one output. So maybe this one can be. Before we do the implementation, we need to simplify this. So when we talk about A, when we apply the in input on the the input of the gates. Uh, here, logically, you can uh, get the output immediately without anything. But uh, this is not the case. Because the gates are implemented by physical, by some physical devices, or like transistor. Uh, there are some delays. And uh, these delays is so, uh, these delays besides the frequency of your circuit. The delay, the gate delay is at least a one nanosecond. Due to this delay, uh, your circuit can only operate at one gigahertz because you, when you change your input, it will take another one nanosecond to generate the output. So there is one example to use the logic gate in the contract. And this is the two Why this is so called a half add? Because there is no carry in. You only have a carry off. By two the carry in and carry out, you can connect them together to implement a multiple bit adder. 
But here we just it's just a half adder, so we So by two days, we can implement this compact. And this is a car, uh, this is a four. Right, a different when we have this carry in, we can only four. Then we need to change this half adder to this one. We will talk about you know we will talk about more on how any question. Yes. Uh, if no question, we have we can stop today. Thank you. <laughs>